Thank you for staying with us. It's SME Monday. We have Mimi Yina now. She is a fashion stylist, entrepreneur, CEO, meddling couture, and a fashion consultant. She's passionately driven and goal actualizing oriented. Now, meddling is a fashion conglomerate of everything fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. And of course, uh, she's been in business for about 10 years plus. Yes. You have to be passionate to be in business in Nigeria for that long. Absolutely. You're Absolutely. welcome. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank now, you. what, what's, what was your, or what is your reason to tell? Why did you start meddling uh, couture? Why? What, what was the reason for it? So it came about from passion. It was my passion. All through um, when I was in the university, I'd always had passion for fashion. You know, so mm, I like that passion for fashion. Yeah, wow, passion for fashion. <laughs> you would good. never catch me not put together. Mm. So, um, in the course of studying sociology, I decided to follow that that course. Okay. So by the time I was done, I just said to myself, you know what, you're already doing this, so you might as well put it into into action. And okay. then, um, um, you know what they say when you pursue your your passion. Hmm. It's way better than even what you think you studied, and hmm. you see that you do very well in that. In that, so I just followed, followed. Just followed it. You know, talking about passion, that that's what almost every uh, business owner would say. What are your thoughts on passion when it comes to business? You know, some people have some passions that are not maybe financially viable at the moment, but they still go through. What is your take on passion? Do you have to be passionate to do business? Is how how important is passion in? Hmm. Um, business. It's very important. It's actually the key word. It is. Yes, it is. Because the thing is, if you have passion for something, you never get tired of doing that thing. Mm. And then you, first of all, put it as a passion first before you monetize it. But what if that passion isn't something that can generate funds? Most of the time, I would say most of the time, that passion that you have, mm. you can make it generate funds. Okay. You okay. actually can make it generate okay. funds. Even if it's not the generating fund one, mm. you can make it okay. generate. You because find before you have something as a fashion, for instance, if you like to do makeup, mm. definitely you, you'd automatically know that the makeup in the industry now is key. It's a sellout. They, they, we can't have enough makeup artists. Very so true. So even, even um, when you're a graduate, you still need what that thing that you're passionate about, about. To, to, to excel in. Mm. I, I, I know someone whose passion is bird watching. But they've made money from it. You just put up pictures and then put it online, and hey, and come on, you can become an, an influencer or something. Of course. Of okay. Course. So now uh, you've done you've done this for ten years. Let's talk about your progress. How um, well, this was cool. So there was a time you probably not do it for so much money and all that. But at what point did it become important for you to make money from this? At what point did you know that look, uh, if I do, if I'm not making money from this, how far can I go? Can I go? Okay, so apparently it's, um, the Medlin brand has come a very long way. Mm. It's been a process, actually. Um, I'm not one of those ones that made it so quick. So I would say like three years ago, mm. because before now, what I do is I, I had boutiques. I used to sell clothes. So I've always sold clothes, and I am still selling clothes. But I realized that when I have people come in, I just combine the outfits for them. I've been doing that. I used to go to Asaba, to the movie industry. Then nobody knew. But I'll go to Funke, she's shooting in Asaba. I'll go to sleep in a hotel, take like 10 of, or oh, 10 boxes, all through the night after her set, we're combining clothes, I'm combining the outfit of how she's going to style it. Same for Inedo. So I was always in Asaba, but nobody knew it. I was just mm. doing it because I was selling clothes and I had passion for, you know what, this color goes for this color. For this color and all of that. So it's something I've done, and I realized that it made me sell more, even in my sales. Because when you come to buy one thing and you find out that I've combined different things for you, for you, you end up buying you more. End up, okay. You know, so two, two years ago, two to three years, we're heading to three years now. I just said, okay, I might as well venture into this styling and styling. Thing. Because okay. I actually do it, but I do it for fun. I do it without thinking of without money. Thinking about and then money. I decided to monetize it. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have been giving away my self knowledge mm. for free. For free. But that's why I said it's always good to have your passion first. First. Because and of the passion. Most people, I remember Funka Akindele more than 10 years ago told me that she followed me from Instagram because of how I dressed. Mm. So it has to be something you love to do. So you have to be the first person to market your business. It has to show on you. It has to show always. Even up till date, I'm always the first person to market my to business. To market your I, business. I Wonderful. Now, we know that challenges are, are never ending. But let's talk about a few. Maybe what are the most notable challenges you had to face as a business owner, specifically in Nigeria, in such climes? 
Ah, uh, there are times where devs, I'm sure everybody suffers from that. Mm. When, you know, the Nigerian market is somehow, but not now though, but when you start first, it makes you think that, you know, if you don't sell anything on credit, you might not be able to sell. Very true, and especially when you're just starting. starting. And then you're worried that, okay, you might as well sell them instead of looking at your goods. So fast forward, I'm like, okay, that was such a wrong theory. Because what happens is you pack all your goods and you give to somebody, thinking you have sold market and it's on credit. Mm. And then the money never comes. Mm. And I realize now that I can still see my goods and somebody can walk in and buy those goods. Okay. So why give it out on credit in the notes that, you know what, it's credit. And then you say to yourself, when you travel, I travel out all the time, I buy these things. I don't go asking for credit in the store. I don't go saying, oh, let me, let me swipe and maybe I'll pay some later. I'll pay some they, later. They, they just call the police to say, okay, mm. she needs check, mm. you know. So, or the um, psychiatric home. <laughs> that exactly. So uh, um, credit, um, owing, or I don't know how, debt yeah, is, is a very strong... You see, and it can also actually bring down the business as well. You know, but people will tell you that if you're starting and they don't know you, that that's a good way to start. Yeah. But would you, would you, would you, for an upcoming uh, designer or any other business, how would you, how would you, how would you tell them to go through that phase when nobody knows you and someone says, eh, okay, let me take it, I'll pay you at the, at the end of the month. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a staff or I'm a worker. Mm. I, get, I get paid at the end, at the end of the month. Let me just take it now. What do you do in those kind of situations? First of all, I'm not going to say don't because you're just starting. Okay. But the truth is, if you start, check credibility first before you give out. Credibility. Yes, That's check the word. first. Make sure that the person, like you've just said, they work at the end of the month. You are sure of even though it's not hundred percent sure, because the thing is that you think you trust somebody. At the end of the month, that same person has other X, Y, Z people that they need to pay, okay. and then it becomes story. And especially for clothing, by the time somebody wears your clothes, then you can't do anything. You can't do anything you can't about do anything. it. So it's a half and half chance. You always have to pass through that, but always check credibility to say, okay, this person kind of have integrity, and the person might just say, okay, I'm starting pay. Okay, for now, offline or online, where do you do the where, where, where does business come in the most? Online, my online. goodness, God, yes. Online. online. But how many? How do you still? Do you still uh, maintain offline stores? Of course, I do. Okay, how many offline stores do you have now? Okay, so in Port Harcourt, before I, I left, because I'm almost here more now. More now, okay. In Port Harcourt, we had like three stores. Okay. Now we we just moved into Lagos. This okay. is like our second year, like I said. Okay. So we have one now. W one store in Lagos. Yeah, okay. That, and that's because most of our Services are online. Are online. Online. So, offline, how many staff do you employ? Um, we have like 15 hmm. here in That's Lagos, and then we have some in Port Harcourt, maybe more actually. Okay. More. Yes. All right, but yes. now, but now, because of um, the online, the, the move to online, you do quite a lot of your business online. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about scaling up in business. So. Um, somebody who starts a business and I started seeing some level of profit, you know, there's that urge to let me f let me have let me step up my game, let me move to this particular kind of life lifestyle. How would you um, a, a new business owner who's starting? How would you advise them to to work on their business in such a way? What can you what do you keep apart to grow the business? What do you take? How much should you take? How you know how do you draw that balance between growing the business and you know enjoying the returns from that business? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to be very, very focused and determined mm. on what you should do. Never, ever touch your capital. Mm. Then um, I would always tell people, even as a business owner, just so you regulate your spendings, because a lot of entrepreneurs are impulse spenders and mm. buyers. You know, I've been there before, so I can I can tell you for free that. So you just go. Oh my goodness! You just, just see one. Is like, ah, just, the money is there now. I crazy. I have a PA that always guides me. You know. Hmm. But the thing is, you first things first. Put yourself on salary and say to yourself, I'm not going to touch X, Y, Z. Put if, yourself on, on salary. salary. I've and heard know that, that this is your important. money. Every other money is not your money. It's not your money. So when you're doing, you have your your profit. Um, what you put into the your capital, what hmm. you put into the business. Then, as it's coming, you take out your profit, put yourself on salary, guide yourself, make sure you're not mingling into your profits or your capital. Hmm. Because once you do that, if you don't have separate, if you don't separate these things, you just realize that you're working around the clock and you are not accountable for anything like wholesome to say, wholesome. okay, this is what and what. So I would always say, be disciplined about your spending, hmm. know what and what to do, work around what you have brought out for your this oh, yeah. some in some cases where you say oh okay i think i've made some extra profit yes fine you can take that but you know for business the more you put in the more 
profits you make. So it's always good to go back, put it back in and make profits. Mm. And, and make sure you're grown to the point where you know what, you can be a little bit, mm. a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Um, you, you, you made mention of something about how you're working with Funke Akindele and Iniedo. Did you just stand up and just go to their sets and all of that? Did you know them before you just to just, just let me start up, let me travel to Asaba sure. and give them clothes? No, not at all. So Funke, um, like I said, she said from my fashion, she followed me from how I used to put things together, how I okay. used to dress and my fashion sense. So she sent me a DM. Oh. Yeah, she sent me a DM. And she saw it on um, on social media. Yeah, social media. No no connections, nobody saying anything. Mm. She just sent it. You know that thing, that you just, your tango just mentioned, that yes. connection, that yes. thing in Nigeria, in business in Nigeria. Yes. It is said to be something that, uh, a, a link that is almost uh, very, almost is something that you can't do without. Mm -hmm. that connect, you, that, like, you have to be you highly have to be connected. connected. You have to be linked to someone. You have so to you're saying you don't someone. have to be? You don't have to, mm. actually. Okay. Some cases it works, mm. but you don't, so that you don't tell yourself that, oh, because most people say, oh, I don't know this person, I might not be able to function. No, it doesn't really have to be that. Your work has to speak for you as well. Okay. So for Funke, she reached out to me and we started. And your work spoke say, for you. My work always speaks for me. Wonderful, wonderful, Mimi. I, if I had uh, one hour more, would still be talking. You are, you are actually giving some nuggets there.